Your success can never be measured compared to others. Your success can only be measured compared to what you can actually do. Don't try to be successful if you want to be successful. Be obedient to the design which God has designed in your life so you can be successful. If you look at the life of a mechanic, the mechanic gets excited when the car doesn't work. You know why? Because a problem has come and he's there to solve it. What we usually do is, we do not sow, but we pray. We do not sow the seed, but we pray. God, bless me. So some of us, we have that money sitting in, the, in our bank account, just lying dormant. If you can simply understand how money grows, you can simply make your money grow in that way. So instead of making your money simply sit idle, let money start working for you. Today I'm going to talk on a very important topic which excites everybody. So today's title is how to be a person of success. How to be a person of success. How do I achieve success in my life? How do I achieve success in my life? So today we are going to see from the angle on how you got to work, how you got to walk, how you got to think. Basically, that is the angle that we are going to see today. So even though we are talking about success, but we are going to see from a totally different dimension. So success, what do you mean by success? This is what success means. Success is measured by, by what you are supposed to do. And not by what you did compared to others. I'm going to repeat that again. Success is measured by, by what you can do or what you are supposed to do. What can you do? Your potentiality. Not by, what you, not by what you did compared to others. For example, let's say you're studying your 10th class, okay? And you, you, go, you, you have written a class test and uh, you go to your home after the results and you say to your mom, mom, I got second in the class. Then your mom says, oh, wow, well done, beta. So how many marks did you get? You say out of 10, I got six. Your mom will go grow a little suspicious. She, she asks you, six? Yes, six. Then what is your highest, uh, the first rank? Then you say, first rank is seven. Second, 6.5. Third, six. Fourth, 5.9. Fifth, 5.8. So you actually didn't achieve much. Why? Because there was a lack of four points over there. Now, did you get it? So, what I mean is, you can actually score 10 by 10. That is your potentiality, yet you have achieved only 60%. And yet you think you are third in your class. So, success is never measured by what, your, what you did compared to others. A lot of times, we always look at the person who did not do well and we feel happy. We appreciate ourselves thinking, oh wow, well, I did pretty good. Well done, well done. You, you compare yourself with your co-worker and you think that you have achieved great success. Well, that is not what it is. Your success can never be measured compared to others. Your success can only be measured compared to what you can actually do. My dear brothers and sisters, in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, if you look at this, it says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, the plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. So what, the reason why I brought this statement over here is because success is the fulfillment of a purpose. Success is the fulfillment of a purpose. But success is not, what do I say, comparison. Success is never a comparison. And God over here states that, I know the plans I have for you. That means God definitely has a purpose towards you. Amen. You are not here by a mistake. Do you know that? Many of us think we are here by a coincidence. We are here by a chance. We are here by luck. No, you're not. You are here because someone over there, a God, a father over there, has determined that you got to be here right now at this moment. Amen. That is your importance, man. That is your level playing field, man. You're not here by a chance. You're not here because of an explosion. No, you are here because of a purpose. You are here because God said so. 
So do not devalue yourself. You are important. Amen. And you need to start believing that God wants you to succeed in your life. How many of you believe that statement? By heart. You know, how many of you believe that, you know, God really wants me to succeed? You know, as soon as I wake up, I know that this day is meant for me. You know, that is the kind of confidence I walk in. I do not wake up just thinking that, oh, it's another day. No, I wake up thinking that God is going to make me do something today. Hallelujah. That is the kind of confidence which God wants you to walk in. That is the kind of confidence which God believes in you. You know, God actually believes in you that you're going to succeed. Not one day, every day. Every day, everybody say that. Every day is my day. Every day is my day. So you need to start believing that your creator has made you to succeed. Your creator has designed you so you can succeed. Hallelujah. The reason why we have six o'clock faces is because we do not believe that statement. Once you start believing that statement, you know, you are always going to be happy no matter what. You're going to have a big failure. You're going to be happy. You know why? Because that failure is the stepping stone for Amen. Oh, and success and failure, they're predictable. You know, they're not like, they're not by chance, they're predictable. How do I say? Well, the same story. If a person goes to school every day, opens his book, understand what's the, what the teacher says, definitely he's going to be successful no matter what. The same way, failure is also predictable. The same student goes to school every day, opens the book, looks at the teacher, but doesn't understand a bit of what the teacher says. He is definitely going to fail in, in that subject at least. So my dear brothers and sisters, what makes success predictable? It is the laws of success. Laws make everything predictable. As a matter of fact, your success is so good for God that God has designed laws for success. If you simply follow those laws, you're going to succeed. That's it. And what most of us we do is, we do not obey the laws, but we fail obeying the laws and we want to pray whole day. You know, the reason why many people want to pray a lot is because they haven't attempted in, in obeying the laws. The re, they, haven't, they haven't made their effort in in, in, you know, in succeeding in their lives. That is the reason why we want to pray every day. Success is a result of being obedient to laws. Success is a result of being obedient to laws. My dear brothers and sisters, so I, I want you to understand this carefully today. Okay, I'm going to take it a little slow today so you can understand what I'm trying to say. Don't try to be successful if you want to be successful. I'm going to repeat that again. Don't try to be successful if you want to be successful. Be obedient to the design which God has designed in your life so you can be successful. Hallelujah. So what gives you success? Being successful or being obedient? Being obedient to the laws which God has already placed in your life. That's my secret of success. If you look at uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 10, this is what it says. If the axe is dull, and its edge unsharpened, more strength is needed, but skill, that means wisdom, will bring success. Hallelujah. If the axe is dull, how long is it going to take you for, for you to knock down the tree? A lot of time. Let's say 10 hours, 12 hours. But you know what? If, the, if it was me, if, the, if my axe was, was dull, you know what? I would spend two hours sharpening the axe. And the third hour, I would start knocking it down. The fourth hour, it is done. How many hours did I save? At least, at least seven, eight hours. My dear brothers and sisters, a lot of us, we are lacking in wisdom. This is written by Solomon. Better sharpen your axe. Amen. Better sharpen your axe. When was the last time you picked up a book and started reading it? I don't know, brother. I don't even know. I stopped reading when after my 10th class, or after my degree. Stopped reading. Stopped. God says, no. That is the reason why it is taking longer for you to do things. The reason why it is taking longer for you to do things is because 
your axe is not sharp enough. Life is not about working hard. Life is about working skillfully. Hallelujah. Life is about working swiftly. Everybody say swift. Oh man, I love that word swift. You know, swiftly is what you got to do. You know, working with knowledge and wisdom will give you that swiftness. Working with knowledge and wisdom is what gives you that skillfulness. Most of us, we are not skillful. That is the reason why we need counsel. We need the help of others. You know, the reason why you go to your manager when you have a problem is because mm, this is dull. You got to sharpen it, man. You got to sharpen it today. You know, life is not working hard. Some of us, we get, we get mad sitting in the car because it, it's not working. It's not starting for two days. If you look at the life of a mechanic, he's never, he's never dull when a car doesn't work. He's never, he's never frustrated when a car doesn't work. If you look at the life of a mechanic, the mechanic gets excited when the car doesn't work. You know why? Because a problem has come and he's there to solve it. He knows how to apply the knowledge into that area. Some of us, we are crying a lot every day. We are crying too much, man. We are, we are, all we are doing is wailing every day. Oh, my life. It is not working. Nothing is happening in me. Nothing is being successful in my life. Stop wailing and start sharpening. Amen. You know, knowing and obeying the laws is what gives you success, nothing else. Knowing and obeying the laws. What does the mechanic do? All that the mechanic does is he simply obeys the laws of the engine. You know, there are certain laws which the, which this the law of mechanics is the first law. Whenever there is a problem, do not get frustrated. Just identify the problem. That is the first law of mechanism. You know, then he goes to the law of gas, the law of, uh, what do you say, the law of pressure, the law of Boyle's law, Charles' law. All these laws are there in that engine. I mean, some of you might be thinking, Pastor, do you know all this thing? I know a little, not much, but I know if my car stops, I know how to start it. That's it. If you're frustrated when your car stops, that means you have never opened your manual. If you're frustrated, if your bike stops, that means you have never opened that manual of your bike. You know, I, when, I, when I bought my uh, bike uh, last August or September, the first thing, after the bike got delivered, you know, the bike got delivered, I was like, man, this is a beast. I drove it back home. After I drove it back home, the first thing I did was open the seat cover to identify the manual. And man, I'm telling you, the manual was so thick. I was like, how do I complete this book? So I opened the book and I, I, didn't, I, and I found that the, the reason why the book was so thick is because they, it had several languages. And the only, the number of pages that English was there was only 10 pages. And you know what? I simply went through it and I finished it. And definitely, there, one day there was a problem for my bike. It was stopping. As soon as I started it, you know, I need to, I, I just put the first gear and I, I went and it stopped. I'm like, man, why is the bike stopping? And then I remembered in page number seven, verse number three, there was a, there was a verse written over there saying that after your bike has started, you got to leave it in idle for a minute and a half to two minutes. Why? Because the engine oil needs to be supplied to the whole four cylinders. The reason why my bike was stopping is because whenever I was revving it, the, 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 the engine oil was not there in the third and the fourth cylinder. It only got passed till the first and the second cylinder. So when I was revving it, the engine was stopping. Now it was, if it was some other person, who didn't go through the manual. If it was me, who didn't go through the manual, I would be cursing at the bike. I would be, I would be scolding the bike, stupid bike, nonsense. 
You are good for nothing. I bought you with so much of money, yet you're not useful. That's how most of our lives are right now. We are cussing ourselves. We are scolding ourselves. We are blaming others. We are blaming our whole environment. We are blaming our managers, our system. We are blaming our office. We are blaming our parents. We are blaming our brothers, our sisters, our health. Come on, church. Better stop blaming and start obeying the laws. Amen. You know, everything that, everything that we have around us, it obeys the laws. Your phone, it obeys the laws. The law of frequency, the law of apps, the law of coding, the law of testing, everything obeys the laws. Your phone obeys the laws, your clothes obey the laws, your spectacles, they obey the laws. Mic, lighting, wiring, everything that is around you, all of them obey the laws. The only person that doesn't obey And you know what? Success is a process. It is not a destination. You got to better understand that. Success is not a process. I mean, it is a process. It is not a destination. Many of us think that's the reason why you never need, you should never have a, what do we say? A monetary success. If you start thinking like, uh, most of us, this is, this is the kind of, uh, this is what we think success is. Having a, having a Mercedes Benz is a success. No. Success is never a destination. Success is only a process. Having a Benz is not, a, is not successful. It is just a byproduct of success. Are you understanding? Having a big house is not, a, is not successful. It is only a byproduct of being successful. So success is moving in the right direction than coming to a destination. You know, so you never arrive at, a, at success. All you do is you go through success. Hallelujah. That is the reason why I say every day is successful for me. Even though I have failures, I'm still successful. Amen. So no failure can decide your fate. No failure can, can tell you that you are a failure. My dear brothers and sisters, do you want the secret of, secret of success? Do you want it? Only if you want it, I'll give it to you. Okay, ready? All right, open your Bibles. Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. If you have a pen or a pencil, just underline verse 8. Keep this book of law always on your... What do you mean by always on your lips? That means always on your mind, always readily available. Keep this book of law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night. That means always keep on thinking about it. About what? The book of laws. <laughs> so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Now what you got to do? Not everything, but everything that is written in it. Alright? So you will do everything written in it. Then you will be, read that, prosperous and successful. That is the only secret sauce. The only secret sauce to success is very simple. Oh, pastor, I need to know Kathakali, Bharatanatyam, that, this, nothing, brother. Nothing, sister. All you got to do is just meditate on the laws and obey the laws. Just have it in your mind and you are going to be successful. Amen. Now, prosperity comes by understanding and obeying the law. There is no shortcut to success. We always want the shortcut. Sometimes people come to me, Pastor, tell me your secret to success. I say, my secret to success is obeying the laws. That's it. My secret to success is obeying the laws. You know, when I was a child, I wanted to go against the law of gravity. So I tied the Superman towel behind me and I jumped from first floor to ground floor. By God's grace, there was sand beneath. That's the reason why nothing happened. Otherwise, I wouldn't be standing over here because my legs would break. I thought I would fly like the Superman. No, I didn't. I got stuck down to this earth because of the law of gravity. 
From then on, I started obeying the law of gravity. My dear brothers and sisters, better start obeying the laws. Better start obeying the laws. Prosperity comes by obeying laws. There is no shortcut to success. And that is what the whole world always thinks. Let me learn all the shortcuts. No, there is only shortcuts in your keyboard, in your computer. Not in the life. Not in life. You know, Virat Kohli's concentration is only on the bat and ball. Nothing else. It is never on money. Virat Kohli's concentration is never on money. But where is your concentration? It is always on money. Virat Kohli never worries about money. Why? Because all he cares is about the law of playing, the law of gravity, the law. How does air work? Because according to the air, the ball flows. How does the pitch work? How does the surface work? The law of surface. My dear brothers and sisters, you are worrying about the wrong thing. You are worrying about money. And God says, do not worry about money. Meditate on the law. Arre yaar, mera office mein kuch nahi hum kama sakta hai. Same. That's not how Virat Kohli thinks. Virat Kohli never worries about the money. All he worries is about how does the ball bounce on different pitches? How do I pick, select a shot when the ball comes? My dear brothers and sisters, all you got to do is worry about how to solve a problem that comes into your life. Turn to your neighbor and say, do not worry about money. It is going to come. Definitely. 100%. Look at me. I never worry about money. Neither Monday, nor Tuesday, nor Wednesday, nor Thursday, nor Friday, nor Saturday, nor Sunday. You know, when, when I pay uh, to all my employees in the office, not after the month starts, before the month ends. <laughs> all our payments are done, even before the month ends. Hello. My dear brothers and sisters, you better understand this statement. If you worry about money, never money will never come before you. I mean, money, money will never come to you. In the same way, you got to plant a seed in the soil. Now, once you plant a seed in the soil, do you really worry about how is the seed going to come up? Never. Now, why do I say this? Now, you... And let, let us just understand the design of God, okay, today. Uh, God created three angels. The first angel's name is Michael. The second angel's name is um, Gabriel. The third angel's name is Lucifer. Michael is the army general. He is the one who leads the armies of God. Second one, Gabriel. He's the messenger. He always sends messages uh, the communication center of the kingdom of God. You know, he's the Gabriel is the communication guy. This third person, Lucifer, he's the minister of culture. Uh, he, 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 no, culture, minister of culture is one of the most important portfolios in any government, you know, because they sustain the language, they sustain the music, they sustain the dance, they sustain the dressing. Everything is in that uh, ministry of culture. Now, if you look at this, all these three cherubims, all these three are cherub, cherubims, you know, the cherubim angels. That means the highest angels, the ministers. Now, these guys, all of, all of them, they had their own jobs until Lucifer started disobeying God. Even today, Michael still holds his portfolio. Even today, Gabriel holds his portfolio. The only guy who lost his portfolio is Lucifer. You know why? Because he disobeyed the laws. Now, do you understand the importance of obeying laws? If you understand, say Amen. Now, all these three were angels, but only one turned from being an angel to a demon. Do you understand? Three of them are angels, but only one guy who was an angel turned to be a demon. 
Now what made him a demon from an angel? The only thing, disobedience. Disobedience will lead you into dispositioning. Because of this dispositioning, the angel became a demon. That is the reason why now he doesn't have a job. Now he doesn't have work. That is the reason why all these guys who are idle, the Lucifer becomes their best friend. Because this guy has no job, neither does he want you to do a job. He wants you to sit idle at home. Lazy things. Filling up your stomach, getting lazier by the day, doing nothing, not being productive. Man, I'm telling you, Lucifer is right at you. If you don't want Lucifer inside you, better start obeying the laws and better start working. Hallelujah. Do you know the word of God says, if you do not work for one day, do not eat that day. Hello. If you do not work one day, do not eat that day. But what do we do? We take loans to eat. We swipe a credit card to it. I'm telling you, man, do not make Lucifer your best friend. Hallelujah. Do not make Lucifer your best friend. The reason why an angel became a devil is because it, it, it disobeyed a law of God and the law is the law of pride. The law of pride. You know, I don't really like people who are prideful because God doesn't like pride. So you also don't like pride. So better don't have that pride inside you. Amen. You know, God is so humble that he's the king of kings and the lord of lords. Yet he came down to this earth so he can give his life for you. That is what is called humbleness. Some of us, you know, who, who are pr proudful? The people who do not work. People who have work in their hands, they're always humble. They're always ready to le learn things. They're always ready to seek new avenues. They're always ready to learn things of higher value. My dear brothers and sisters, let's all open our Bibles to Mark chapter 4, verse 26, so I can make you understand something today. He says, he also said, this is what the kingdom of God is like. A man scatters seed on the ground night and day. Whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts and grows. Though he doesn't know how, all by itself the soil produces grain. First the stalk then the head, then the full kernel in the head. As soon as the grain is ripe, he puts the sickle to it because the harvest has come. Now what do you understand by this? Nothing, pastor, a farmer is there, that's it. Better understand this. I'm going to teach you. Are you ready to learn today? All right. Now understand the story of the kingdom of God, all right? The kingdom of God, this is what it is. This is what the kingdom of God is like. A man scatters the seed on the ground. Where does he scatter? Where does he scatter? Now why does he scatter the seed on the ground? Simple. Because that's where a seed will be the most fruitful. Got it? So you better start understanding where you are most fruitful. You are most fruitful only in certain areas, not in every area. If you, keep the if you keep the seed on a granite right over here, do you think it is going to sprout? If you keep the seed in your hand, do you think it is going to sprout? No. Do you think if you keep it in the air, <laughs> you think the seed will sprout? No. If you keep it in a light? No. If you keep it somewhere? No. Only in the soil. So you got to understand what your soil is for you to sprout. Amen. What is your soil today? Oh, pastor, I wanted to be, I, I wanted to be an interior designer from my childhood, but now, I don't know what I'm doing. If you, if you want to be an interior designer, better start having an interest in that and start, pastor, I don't have any opportunities. Just go to your friend and say, I'm going to design your home for free. For free. Just give me a chance. Just give me a chance. 
My dear brothers and sisters, now night and day in verse 27 we see, whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts and grows, though he doesn't know how. What did the farmer do? He simply obeyed the law of seeding. The law of seeding. Now, the farmer didn't, know, didn't, didn't really care about how does it all work. Some of us, we are always stuck at that how. That we forget that. Simply obey the laws in order for you to be successful. Are you understanding, church? Or you, you, do, you don't really want to know how does it work. All you need to know is it does work. Or you... For example, some of us, we have that money sitting in, the, in our bank account, just lying dormant. If you can simply understand how money grows, which I'm not going to teach you today, you, you can simply make your money grow in that way. Amen. So instead of making your money simply sit idle, let money start working for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But what do we do? We do the other way around. We always want to work for money. That's not the principle of the Bible. The Bible says, better let your money work for you. How does it, how does it happen, pastor? I'm going to deal with that some other day. Maybe I'm going to make a payment out of it. So you better pay for the session and attend that session. All right, anyways. So all that, all that the farmer did was to obey. Everybody say obey. It is the most important thing in your life. Huh? Don't miss that. Obey the laws. Obey the laws. So he sowed a, so a seed into the soil which was obeying certain laws. That's it. The farmer didn't study about it. All that the farmer knows is if I sow a seed into it, I'm going to get a kernel. I'm going to, I'm going to get a plant out of it. The farmer didn't have to pray for the outcome. Now did the farmer pray over there in the verse? No. Nope. Why didn't he pray? Because he knows that the laws work. Amen. The farmer didn't pray for the outcome. What do we do? We always pray. But we don't obey. So praying without obedience is cancelling the law which should work for you. That is the reason why the Bible says it is much better for you to obey. Obedience is much better than sacrifice hello it's for you obedience is much better than now what we usually do what we usually do is we do not sow but we pray we do not sow the seed but we pray God bless me bless me God says how should I bless you you didn't sow you didn't sow, man. How should I bless you? God, give me a car. How can I give you a car when you don't have a job? God, give me a bungalow. How can I give you a bungalow when you do not, do not care of the rent, when, when you do not take care of the rented house? My dear brothers and sisters, the farmer didn't have to pray for the outcome. Why? Because he obeyed the laws. You also don't really need to pray for the outcome when you obey the laws. You only want, to, want that miracle. You only want that, I want that miracle. I pray for a miracle. I want, you go to pastor after pastor after pastor, church after church after church, expecting a miracle. God says, no, you're a fool. I don't, I don't do miracles just like that. I do a miracle only if you sow. Amen. Some of us, we do not put any kind of efforts towards your wife and you expect good respect from your wife. God says, I'm not going to make her respect you. Why? Because you're not putting any effort towards her. My dear brothers and sisters, you are attracted towards success, but you are repelled because of the obedience that it takes in order for you to succeed. Most of us, we are always repelled by the sacrifice that it, it, it takes. I'm talking to you today. You don't pray for your bike to start after you fill the petrol, right? Do you, do you pray, oh God, let this bike start because I have filled the petrol? No. 
If you know that your bike is in empty, all you got to do is refill it up. Refill it up. You know, once I and my brother, we were going on a bike to do ministry. I was a child. I think I was in my, so I was in my sixth class. So we were going in this dark, dark uh, village. There was no light. There was nothing. And I don't know what happened. All of a sudden, my brother, he hit something. I didn't know that he hit something. I knew that I was on the road. I was on the road. I didn't know what happened. I don't know where my brother was. There was no cell phone, nothing. No light, nothing. Even, my, even the, the scooter didn't have a light. I didn't know what happened. I was on the road. All I did was, I shouted for my brother, Anna, where are you? Then my brother said, I'm right over here. Wait, just don't, don't shout. Wait, just don't shout. I don't know what I hit. We hit a pig. We hit a pig, man. That, that wild boar, it was crossing the road. And we didn't have a light. It was pitch dark. I didn't, I mean, we didn't know that the light was not working. You know, when we started, it was around 5. By 6.30, it was pitch dark and we were in this village. We didn't pray for grace of God. Grace of God, please come down and take care of us. No. All we did was we searched. We searched for that scooter. We searched where the engine was coming. The sound was coming from the engine. And somehow my brother came to that place. We picked it up. And we started it. And then the light started working. Hallelujah. The light started working. Once the scooter fell down. That's when we realized that we hit a pig. The pig was there, right over there, looking at us. You better understand that There are certain things which you do not pray for. There are certain things which you pray for. Hallelujah. If I was in the same situation and I, I was lying on the road, I was like, God, please save us. Thank you, Lord, for this accident. Let your grace cover me. Nothing will work, man. Nothing. Even today I will be lying over there. Let me show you one verse. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 7. Wisdom is supreme. What is supreme? Wisdom is supreme. Therefore get. What did Solomon ask when God appeared before Solomon? Solomon, what do you want? A father, I want a car. I want a bag full of money. No. Solomon asked for wisdom. Solomon asked for wisdom. What is that you're praying for today? Correction in your prayer. There needs to be some correction in your prayer. Pray for wisdom, man. Wisdom is supreme, therefore get wisdom. Though it costs all you have, though it costs all you have, get understanding. Get understanding. Get understanding. Get understanding. Everybody repeat these three words after me. Knowledge, understanding, wisdom. Again I say, knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. These three things. You know, knowledge is getting information. That's it, getting information. Know how, right? Know, knowing, that's what knowledge is. Understanding means comprehending. Whatever you got to know, now you put it in an order. You put it in comprehension. And the third one is wisdom. Now whatever you have comprehended, you apply it into your life. You apply it into your life. My dear brothers and sisters, do you know that knowledge reduces fear? Knowledge reduces fear. If you know the laws, you are less fearful. Amen. Amen. Now, grace doesn't cancel the law. Do you know that? Grace 
doesn't cancel the law. As a matter of fact, grace itself is a law. Do you know that? Grace itself is a law. Now, now Matthew chapter 5, verse 7. Let me read this and you're going to understand this. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the... What did Jesus come to do? I have not come to abolish them, but to... Maybe your perception about Jesus was wrong till now. This is the real master. This is the real deal about Jesus. Jesus said, I did not come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish them. Twice he said, but to fulfill them. But to fulfill them. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth disappear, not the smallest letter nor the least stroke of a pen will by any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. Until everything is accomplished. Therefore, anyone who sets aside one of the least of these commands and teaches others accordingly will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever practices and teaches these commands will be called great in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. That is the reason why I always teach the principles of God. Not the grace of God. Grace of God is always there. But grace of God doesn't really change your life. If some of you who have come for the second service, you know Brother Seshu. Last week he told a testimony saying that when I came to this church, my salary was 14,000 a month. 14,000, one four. And after three and a half years, because of the teachings that I have heard and I followed it, and I have obeyed the principles, whatever is being taught in this church, he said, now my salary is, the last salary that I have drawn is, 2,40,000 in three and a half years. He didn't pray for it. He didn't pray for it. He didn't pray for the outcome. All he did was obey the law, kept on sowing, kept on sowing, kept on sowing, obeyed it, obeyed it, obeyed it, obeyed it, obeyed it, obeyed it, and the fruit is there. Hallelujah. Some of us, we have been coming to our church, to this church from a long time. Why is there no change? Some of us blame it on me. Oh, the pastor doesn't have any power. No, I, I agree, I do not have any power. Totally in agreement. No power in my prayer, no power in anything. But there is power in the word. Amen. There is power in the word. 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 If you obey the word, understand it, obey it, I'm telling you, you're going to reap benefits out of it. Some of us, we are so used to our traditions, we are so used to, you know, our old ways that we don't want to leave it. This is where we find in Matthew chapter 15, verse 2, I think. Uh, we, yeah, 2 verse 2, this is what it says. Why do your disciples break the tradition of the elders? They don't wash their hands before they eat. Now, this is the statement I want you to understand. Jesus replied, Why do you break the command of God for the sake of your traditions? Why do you break the command of God? Why do you break the laws of God? Why do you break the principles of God just for the sake of your tradition? Why do you come late? Oh, pastor, I've been used to coming late. Every Sunday, I only come late. That's how I am. That's how I built. God says, no, I'm not going to bless you because you do not honor time. You do not honor time. Why do you wake up late? Oh, pastor, I sleep late. Why do you sleep late? I eat late. Why do you eat late? Oh, pastor, I'm used to eating late. That's my family tradition. Better start changing your traditions. Why do you break the principles of God? That's the reason why you have bad health. It is because you don't wake up in the morning, do not exercise, do not put your body into that metabol metabolism which should be activated in the morning. That is the reason why you have many, many diseases which are piling up one on the other, one on the other, one on the other. And yet you pray, pray God heal me. God says, I cannot heal you without you putting the effort towards it. Let's all stand on our feet. 
let us just spend some time in prayer today ask god for forgiveness god forgive me i want to change from today i want i'm going to start obeying rather than falling into grace i want to obey the laws which you have made the principles which you have kept for me i want to start following that are you obeying the laws or merely following the rules that is set by the society just understand that are you following which god has designed for you or are you only following what the society wants towards you you know purpose it lets you know your destiny perception is what gives you your vision potential is what determines your ability passion is what gives you the desire principles is what sets the laws planning is what determines the strategy people is what determines the influence persistence determines commitment are you committed today perseverance determines dedication and prayer determines how spiritual you are understanding the deeper meaning that's what prayer is i want you to start asking for forgiveness god forgive me i have been in the wrong perception in the wrong mindset today through this message my eyes are open my ears are open ha. today i found out how you are going to bless me and i'm going to follow in that way i'm going to follow that today from today i'm going to stop complaining stop blaming people stop living that nagging life i'm going to start repairing repairing myself repairing my heart repairing my thought process let me be dedicated to father in what i believe let me let me understand your mind today let me understand your mind today that's what i am after that's who i am after i'm after you i'm not after your hand i'm after you i'm after your mind my dear father we thank you for this day we thank you for your blessings we thank you for your mercy we thank you for your grace and above all we thank you for your principles your laws where we know that if we abide by you if we abide by your thought if we abide by your laws by your by your principles of oh father you're going to bless us the kingdom of god is always there the kingdom of god is always there ready to bless us oh father lord we thank you for giving us grace where we are we are able to see things clearly better way we thank you for your mercy where we are able to understand things which which we never understood before we thank you for making us understand that you have made a life in a beautiful design for us to succeed oh father but we have merely not understood how it can be operated but today oh father with this word we have understood that you are there only for us to succeed you have designed our life to succeed you have given us this day so we can succeed you have given us today oh father so we can succeed oh lord we thank you for your blessings for your mercy above all we thank you for your precepts which you have given to us so we can abide by it and we can grow oh father 
we thank you father for your blessings today we thank you father for your mercy today we thank you for your grace we thank you for everything for your love your protection your healing we ask you to deal with us in the right way of oh father if we have somewhere we have misstepped of oh father we we have stepped aside we ask you to correct us and we are ready to be corrected of oh father we thank you lord be with us as we go back home bless each and every person that has given offerings into your presence we thank you for delivering us from the clutches of the devil in jesus mighty name we ask and pray amen